Hi, this is Chetan. Uh, welcome to this lecture. So in this particular exercise, what we want to do is to simulate the uh, RDS multi-AZ failover, which means uh, we can have RDS master and slave in different availability zones in the same VPC. And then uh, if RDS master fails for some reason, I mean, it could be AWS initiated failover maybe uh, AWS is doing some patching work or maintenance work or you uh, RDS can actually fail due to an hardware that could also cause this kind of failure and in that case the uh, failure happens automatically if you have deployed RDS in multi-AZ mode so the connection from uh, master goes and you can see that it can point to the standby replica and your application need not do anything for this because RDS maintains a DNS endpoints which automatically points to the standby replica in another AZ. Okay, so we want to do this exercise and for this, as you can see, we need to do some preparations. Uh, first, we'll create one VPC in Mumbai region and uh, then we will create three subnets, uh, two subnets for uh, RDS in uh, private sub uh, in private mode and then one public subnet uh, in which we will launch EC2 instance because using that instance we will be connecting to our RDS. So on this EC2 we will uh, have an uh, MySQL client and this RDS instances will launch as a MySQL and then we will uh, simulate the failover by rebooting this master. Uh, in case of reboot, there is an option if you want to do a failover and we will say yes and we will then check whether failover has actually happened and we are now talking to standby replica. In this sole exercise, we expect the data that we had here is automatically get replicated here in real time. So there is there should be no data loss when this happens. Okay, so let's do this exercise. Uh, high level steps are here we need to create two uh, create a VPC with two private subnets and one public subnet and rest of the things you can just go through this and I'm just going directly to the exercise okay so I'm going to my console I don't have anything as of now uh, new VPC I need to create so I'm just creating VPC I assume you are already well aware of all these steps of creating VPC and subnets so I'm just going very fast Let's call it my VPC and CRDA blog that we had chosen or seen in the diagram, which was 10.00.16 for the VPC. So let's do that 10.00.16. Let's create an internet gateway. and attach this internet gateway to our VPC. Next, let's create a subnets. First, we'll create my VPC public subnet. We'll give AZ as first AZ and we'll give the range as 10.00.00 slash 24. Okay. <clears throat> Look at the diagram, the subnet CIDRs for this private will create 1.0 and 2.0. So let's do this. Create uh, the next thing ideally you should do first is create a public route table for this public subnet. So let's do that. My VPC public. It's a route table we are creating. And just go there to the route table and add a route for internet. Zero and route it through internet gateway. Also, don't forget to attach it with your public subnets. That's it. Okay, let's create two more subnets, private subnets. So let's do that. We'll say my VPC private one. And make sure you choose different availability zones for these two different subnets. So here I'm selecting 1A and the side of block 1000 slash 24. Let's create another subnet, my VPC private 2, AZ2, and 10.00.2.0 slash 24. Subnet is created. Let's create a private route table. Let's call it my VPC private. And 
as you know we don't need to add any routes but just we need to associate with our these two subnets so these are two private subnets you can see it here and save okay so i'm done with this network setup if you can see uh, the next thing we want to do is launch one ec2 public instance here but before that let's do an rds thing because launching rds instance takes some time okay so for rds uh, the first thing we need to have is create a db subnet group because rds wants at least two subnets to get launched so we will create a db subnet group and add these two subnets inside that subnet group so for this let's switch to our rds console and here you will see on the left side you will see db subnet groups there are some default subnet groups let's just delete the older one and now let's create a new subnet groups let's call it my vpc db subnet group for failover demo okay vpc we can select and then we need to add our subnet so we are adding a subnet which is private which is this from az1 and from az2 we want to add the subnet that we have so it should ultimately have these two private subnets that we added okay create it okay now let's jump to creating the database so let's go to the database as you can see i don't have anything let's create database you should choose mysql we are looking at the mysql as of now uh yeah probably one thing we can do before this is creating a security group because rds also need a security group so let's go back to our ec2 console in mumbai let's go back to security groups and let's create a new security group say rds sg and in our vpc and an inbound rule as you know it's a nice uh, it's a mysql we need to open 3306 and if you see we need to open it for this ec2 instance which could be a subnet cidr or an vpc cidr so we'll put in subnet cidr 1000 0.0/24 just create that okay done let's go back to rds again create database select mysql and we don't want to enable uh, free tier usage because we are going to launch in multi az and multi az does not come free okay next we want to have a day and test kind of mysql next we are keeping most of the things as default just that we want to have a replica in another availability zone and that's where we want to create multi az deployment important thing is this db instance class we want to choose the t2 micro that comes free so let's use t2 micro allocated space 20 gb that's fine and here you can configure the details so db instance identifier i can set my db instance master username i can say master and password i can put something okay you need to remember these things because you might have to log in later next vpc we need to select this and db subnet group it automatically picked up from what we had created public accessibility we don't want we want our databases in private subnet so just keep it no any az preference for db yes we want to have a, a master one in az a so that the replica automatically gets created in az2 security groups yes we have our own security group which is rds sg and let's use that we don't want default only rds sg and database option i can say my db this is the database name port is 3306 and rest of the things we are going to keep as it is okay uh, that's it we wanted and just say create database okay requesting a specific availability zone is not available that's true because in multi AZ, aws decides where to launch in database and that's where we would have to skip this we would have to say no preference you choose yourself okay we are creating the database it will take 
at least 5 to 10 minutes so what we will do is by that time we will uh, go to EC2 and launch a public EC2 instance so that we can connect to our database so let's go back to our instances uh, and launch one instance you are aware of all these steps I'm selecting my VPC and a public subnet this time and I also want a public IP to this instance don't forget this step otherwise your EC2 instance won't receive a public IP that's what I'm doing and just say storage tags I can say RDS client security group I just want to connect from my machine so I'm putting my IP and I'm just launching this instance okay so it will take some time let me pause this video for a couple of uh, seconds or say maybe a one minute or so by that time we have EC2 instance ready and I also expect RDS machine to be ready by the way you can just go here and check your databases you can maybe refresh this page what is happening okay and you can just go here and check it's still creating once it is created you will receive an endpoint and an port that's what we are interested in okay let me pause this video here and I'll come back hi welcome back so if you can see the database state is modifying which still means we can use this and I have the port and the endpoint available with me okay so next thing let's log into our EC2 instance so I might already got this up and uh, we have the public IP as you know we can connect this using putty so I'm just going there and just connecting to my EC2 instance okay so this is a, a Linux uh, instance and that's where I need to install MySQL client first so I'll just do sudo yum install MySQL I say yes and it will install mysql client the next thing we want to connect to our database and for this we need uh, this command minus h which is an endpoint so i just grab this endpoint from here and we need to give which user it's master if you're customizing the port not using 3306 then you would also need to give this port as something else and I want to connect with the password which I had set okay so I got into this uh, I can just do show databases and I can see there is a mydb I can say use mydb and then maybe I can uh, fire some commands to create the database uh, sorry create some tables okay for this we need to create table and insert some records so I have some commands listed here so you can use the same let me take this I will say create a table with the name AWS training so it created one table with has uh, multiple fields like name batch phone number and email and then I can just go on inserting some data like this it's a dummy data and once that's done I can say select star from AWS training and it shows me the data okay so uh, everything is working as expected one more thing I wanted you to note that you should note in which AZ currently this instance is a database instance is running and it's in 1B that means second AZ as you know we have deployed a uh, database in um, multi AZ mode that's where you will see that uh, when we do the failover now it should automatically switch back to the first uh, another AZ. So one way to do check whether it has really done that failover is uh, a good exercise. Just run this command on your host, uh, EC2 host, which continuously checks the end DNS endpoint for this uh, RDS. So it will look something like this. You just need to replace whatever is written here with your DNS endpoint. So we can do something like this and just replace this with this endpoint. 
Okay, so it's showing that uh, the backend EC2 machine on which AWS has launched RDS is the IP address is this, which comes from the uh, AZ2 because it has this CIDR which we had given to the second AZ. Now let this be running and let's simulate the failover. Let's go back to our RDS console and here in the actions, let's go. Uh, let's wait for some time or let's refresh because DB is not yet created completely. It's still in modifying and that's where it won't allow us to reboot. Uh, let me stop this video for some time and uh, wait till the database is fully created. Okay, you can see that the database is available now. It took some time for me. So let's go there to the action and say reboot. And while rebooting, it will ask whether you want to reboot with failure and which means you can have the force uh, failover in this case. So let's do that. Let's call reboot. And now while rebooting, it will actually initiate the failover. That probably you can also see in the events. Here it has finished database backup and it will automatically start the reboot so it takes some time maybe a couple of seconds or a half minute to see that event here but what we would do at the back end we will see when this dnet start to hit to another ip address okay if you can see this event the multi age instance failure has started and now you can see here it has actually been done and DNS is actually been pointing to this EC2 instance which is from AZ1 which means failure has happened which is we can confirm and here it says failure has completed and it takes some time for this failure AZ to reflect on this console you can see it's still 1B but you should come back to this and uh, then maybe up to 10 minutes you would have to wait some time and it will show the right AZ which is AZ1 this time A. Okay, so that's what we wanted to do. That means uh, the uh, failure is happening. Just let's reconnect to our RDS instance uh, using same DNS. We are not changing this DNS. We are having same password. We say use my DB and we say select star from aws training okay we have this data and that's what we wanted to do so if you could do up to this point congratulations you had simulated the failover uh, across multiple availability zone for the rds uh, for the next lecture you can continue using the same setup you are going to see how to do the how to create a read replica and how to replicate the data. Thanks for watching.